welcome back to the studio. Today is the big composition lesson that you've been waiting for. Finally, although I think that most of you are pretty good with uh, just the general gist of how to create a good composition, I've noticed I'm pretty impressed with my True Colors artists. But nonetheless, it's important for us to relearn or learn this foundation lesson so that it starts becoming part of our natural experience when creating. So here we go. I have a bunch of things to discuss with you, but I'm going to try and simplify it down to just the most important basic parts. And I'm going to start with saying composition includes value, color, mass, and line. Amongst everything else, really, our entire creative process is under the umbrella of composition. So the better we get at it, the better our art's going to be. And how do we get good at composition? It's not something that we memorize. It's something that we do. And I know that I try to shake this into your head over and over again. We must make our art to know how to make our art. In the meantime, let's have a little discussion. I've got this piece here behind me and one more of my favorite works of art that I've done in the recent past. I'm sure you've seen this one on my site or in my Instagram. And I just wanted to review how I worked on this composition. I've got varying sizes of the florals. See some small ones, some larger ones. They go off of the canvas. They layer in top of, on top of each other. I've got a breathing space as well. And the values, we've got dark and light values. And uh, overall, I find this one one of my more pleasing compositions. I think it's one of my favorite pieces I've ever done. And it's pretty special to me, so you won't find it offered for sale, but I do, you know, use this as inspiration a lot in the work that I do now. I wanted to show you a piece, one of my florals, that I didn't think was so successful, and that would be this one. In this piece, I've got several shapes that are very similar, like bulbs. They're little globes on top of, they're almost like little balloons on top of stems. Now I did vary it by putting some up here, but look, we're going way too even with them. And also if I was to change this into black and white, you will find that the value structure on this one is pretty dull. So though, while this isn't a horrible composition, I can see that there's room for improvement on this one. For review, I'm gonna pull up some landscape as well. I love this piece. It was so much fun and it was very much an intuitive process. We've got our horizon line above the halfway mark, almost to the third. I've got a good variation of value and color, some saturated and some a little more muted. And um, we've got a focal area of interest here with these trees. So this one was a piece that I was pretty proud of. But how do I show you uh, artwork that's not so great? I decided I needed to show you bad composition. So I painted bad composition and I did this one first. And I thought, wow, that's not so great. No one's gonna paint worse than that, right? Well, but because this is instinctual to me, I think I still had some elements in this that were valuable. But what I don't think is good is I've divided it equally in thirds. So that rule of thirds doesn't mean divided equally in thirds. It means uh, use the thirds mark as a general idea and guide for a focal point. I also chose in this bad composition to create e four equal masses for my trees and my clouds. And now the thing that I did notice is that the values aren't so bad in this one. And as I watched students paint, what did I find? They were actually painting more like this and not understanding composition. And what do we have here? We're divided almost equally in half. We have this point that goes right here. The, the lines cross and this dips right off the page here without having anywhere to stop or rest the eye. The point is right in the middle. The tree is touching that point, so we don't want two edges to touch. Our sky is the same hue as the rest of the painting. And uh, there's really not a lot of interest. I'm sure you could point at it and say, oh, I see, we've got some problems. So these are, um, this was a fun, somewhat weird project to do, to paint a bad painting. Have you ever painted a bad painting? <laughs> So this was something that I realized I needed to recreate for you in other ways as well. Um, so I'm gonna turn the attention on to uh, the table and I have a few um, details that I wanted to review with you again about composition and design, all right? All right, artists, I want you to learn how to train your eye. So I've worked on a couple little projects here and I know that we were just talking about a few different elements of composition. 
Well, what I would like you to start thinking about is this one rule over and over again is think about variation. When we have things that are too similar, we've created a boring stagnant painting. So I kind of pre-drew some ideas for you. And here I have an idea of, say these were our abstract elements, florals, doesn't really matter. And then you can take a look at how we've got them cropped into our frame. This is the canvas or the page. And they're touching, they're butting right up against the edges here. And they're fairly evenly spaced, even sizes. And man, if we were to just put a vase in there, we've got ourselves quite a, a simple and maybe amateurish design. And so I wanted to show you in contrast to that, if we go off of our canvas and we vary the different shapes from large to small and even another element that's important is starting to maybe overlap pieces. Obviously, that's another important element of creating design, right? So now, well, let's see. Let's create our um, vase. Maybe this is our vase here. Now we've created something where we've got variation. That probably could be a little bigger there. So here's our vase. We've off-centered our vase. We've got a variation of shapes. Say these are our flowers and we're creating something that's more interesting. Uh, maybe we need a focal point. This would probably be our focal point area right here. So you might want to concentrate on color or value as you're looking at. This is just a general guide, but I'm just trying to show you the difference between grouping it all in a cluster that feels kind of trapped by its edges and too similar to something that might be more interesting by changing up the shape and design and varying where our um, design composition is. So that's this one's the more interesting. Now let's go on with another one here. So another problem that we have is this could be trees. This could be um, flowers as well. We could still be talking about abstract. And even if we had small bits, this is a lot like looking at that um, painting I just showed you that was not my very best floral piece. Pretty boring, but even so we could say these were trees, you know, pretty simple. and. I would say we've got some composition problems there, right? But if we change our shapes and we're varying our placement, and maybe this is like this, there's our first array into thinking about a more interesting composition because we have different sizes, we have overlapping, we have um, going off the page. So that's going to be more interesting. Now, if we're going to talk about trees and shapes, then we're going to need to change that even more enhance the visual interest with interesting shapes. So that's what I'm working on now. I'm going to say, what if we change this to a far more interesting and each one is a little bit different and catching your eye and maybe the placement back there might be on the hill. Something else is happening there. And then we have some, maybe I need my slightly larger marker so you can see that we're changing up the shapes and we are um, also out of ink. So there, whoops, a little blooper on tape. There we go. But it also kind of shows you mass, value, and that creates more interest than something that's more stagnant like that. So um, every time you approach the canvas, we've got to think about all these different elements, how, um, how much variation you can add. So think variation. We want to think contrast, not unity contrast not unity and again we're going to have that same um concept we're going to come back in here say this is our cloud here's my little beach scene all right we've got our waves coming and then here's our problem with clouds i see i saw this you know i'm i was really pleased to be able to share seascape escape with so many artists and true colors artists and new artists as well I love being able to give more to artists to be able to help encourage them in their art journey. And I love clouds. If you haven't figured that out yet, clouds are to me an abstract form of creating as well. So what happens when I see this? Sometimes maybe they'd be good enough, artists would be good enough to go off the page or maybe it would simply be, you know, I saw sheep clouds. I know Sarah Cooey reminded me that that's where she gets stuck, but you don't have to be stuck at this. Instead of equally shaped masses that are kissing each other, look at this. This is what I saw quite often. They're kissing each other where these edges touch instead of overlapping. Why not rethink about these masses and allow for different shapes to happen while you're creating? And the thing that's important is shape isn't just this line around something. Shape is also 
our value, our masses. So we might have something that's dark in one area and light in another. And we've got to start thinking about all of those different areas as parts of the whole picture. So maybe this cloud here, we can give it a little more. And I just saw that this line, these lines in here were dark and defined while these were all very light rather than choosing to make all different elements of, so maybe this is our light area and we've got some dark and we've got to create some space for blending, right? Those look like folders instead of clouds, but I'm doing this on a mini scale and trying my best to give you an idea of, of maybe what um, something with more interest might mean to you instead of just these blobs of solid masses. So when we're creating, that's another thing. And it doesn't really matter if you're creating a landscape or floral, or even if what you're trying to do is abstract because everything we do, here's a very interesting concept I want you to think about. Every painting you do is abstract. Yep. It's something my father always said to me as I was learning to be an artist. How can you say, you know, when I painted a, a landscape or I painted florals, how can you say that this is abstract? But we have taken the real world, the 3D world, and we flattened it. So everything that we do, we can come down and simplify it into value and masses instead of subject. So here's another um, problem we, we run into. I find this interesting. We, we run our eye right off the page. Here's my mountain. And now I've created some problems here because my composition, this diagonal line is going right off the page. And, um, and we've got even peaks here too with a divide right down the middle. And I see this problem in composition quite often as well. So even if I was to have brought a dip down here, we still have a problem with it touching too close to the edge of our canvas or our painting. And that's a big challenge too because we don't want anything to either A, lead our eye out, of the page too quickly or B like say this was our tree also here's another problem I see we've placed our tree right here touching to the edge or maybe you have a um, portrait and the person's face is looking right out that that page that tension isn't a very comfortable t tension when you're creating artwork and it creates a pretty uncomfortable painting it's not a very pleasing painting so remember we're gonna go back to the idea that we need variation and contrast so another thing, um, so here we go. Let me see if I can't just pull that together in something more, more pleasing here. Oh yeah, that's my pen. Toss that one. All right, that was my pen that's, broke, that's uh, out of ink. So, so maybe this is why we bring some variation in lines. We don't make them even and we create different lines that kind of bring our eye back into the painting. One, two, one, two right we talk about this all the time our rule of thirds and i want to just remind you that instead of calling it a rule of thirds we're going to just call it a concept and that's because even though these are great ideas for focal points every rule is meant to be broken so here we go this is my concept painting for right now we're above the one third and maybe we have other lines of interest. Maybe we have um, some trees along this line. Now we've given this spot here my focal attention, right? And then we can allow for some area of softness in the rest of the, the um, composition. So this is just a basic um, introduction to some ideas of composition to think about when we're working on landscape. But how about abstract? Because all, like I just said, all work is abstract. And we also need to be focusing on not just our lines and our shapes and masses, but our color as well. So color and value, as we've been talking about, man, we're true colors. What's more important than color? But color can be used effectively or it can be used against you. And so here are a couple of examples I worked on previous to um, sitting down with you today. And I wanted to show what happens when we use color 
an equal amount. So the, the rule of thirds can also be applied towards our value and our color. And in this case, all of those colors are equal. Again, here I've divided this almost equally. And when we turn this into black and white, what do we have? We have all the same, almost all the same values, especially here. So I showed you a few designs that when we start working on abstract, you know, these kinds of large masses of color in equal proportions or small masses of color in equal proportions are um, abstract ideas that I see people come across all the time. And even whether it's abstract or it's meant to be floral, um, take a look at how I've changed up. Now we're looking at mostly some and a bit when we talk about color. This is mostly a pinkish burgundy painting with some blue green and a little bit of orange. And now we've created a better balance between um, colors and the amount of colors that we use. Same here, we've also broken this, all these even amounts of colors down to mostly yellow and some orange with this bold green to give it a good contrast. And, um, and I've also changed the values. Now we have some darker values. We have some interesting lines. We've also got a great composition. And um, that, that's far more effective and more interesting. We've got this kind of keeping our eye in instead of pulling us out, like this line that pulls us right out. Now here, obviously, this is just a very basic, simple, three even shapes. But I'm showing you what happens when we um, whether it's abstract or it's um, landscape, what happens when we move that line up to the one third and then we're giving ourselves a little bit of different colors of the other two colors. So our main focal color in this one was that burgundy red, but I've also got it in a lighter shade. I have it in a muted tone. So we've got some variations and some interest for our eye to see. And um, I found for me working on this project was pretty effective. I want to know what happens if you do the same. I would love to challenge you at this moment to um, make your own grid. Make small spaces for you to work on. It doesn't matter really the size. Mine are just three by three squares. And I want to see what happens if you can make, like I did, I said it was very interesting to work on that big, boring landscape. Can you make purposely some bad paintings and correct that bad painting with something that's better. So that's your challenge. That's a pretty tall order I'm asking of my dear art friends to take what might be a very simple, boring in the middle, and then what happens when we make it far more interesting? Actually, if this was really boring, they'd be equal sizes. We've got something that's different. We've got a circle and a triangle, but what happens if we start creating something that's more interesting? So I would like to see what happens for you if you work on this project. And I think I'm gonna play with this a little bit more and uh, then we'll play with a larger canvas to work on, okay? All right, artists, thanks.